Hey, what's up guys? We're currently at the Milsim Heart of Darkness here in Upper Austria with Adrian from the shop airgun.at and we're sitting on an original M151, so that's a Ford Mat. Um, they've been used by the American military until the late 80s when it got then replaced, I think, 1981 by the Humvee. But this used to be the Humvee, basically. Here, Adrian mounted a replica of a Browning 50 BMG machine gun on top. If you ever played in the Milsim, you're gonna know how much uh, it adds to the entire experience if people bring those vehicles and, you know, you cannot just buy those vehicles. Usually you have to buy them used from armies and Adrian put a lot of a lot of sweat and money into these. I mean, bought it from the Portugal army for, I think, 5,000 euros, that's what he said. And then he put, you know, he sourced all the original parts from all over the world to get it to the state. This vehicle was used in Vietnam War and also the invasion of Granada. And another interesting fact is that it was never really widely released to the civil market because of the rear suspension. There were a lot of accidents of, you know, flipping cars because the way it's designed. So they thought it's too dangerous for the civil market, which is why the American army, you know, when they switched to the Humvee, they just destroyed those things. They were driving with tanks of it, they were cutting them in half. But then people who wanted to collect them and want to own them privately, they sorted them back together and somehow repaired them. Again, a lot of them were sold to different armies, like the Portuguese army, which is why uh, this one, you know, is still working perfectly and it got never destroyed. Okay, so now let's do a quick rundown. I'm just gonna go around the vehicle and I'm gonna try to spot some cool features. Right here, for example, we have the mounting rings for helicopters. So if they want to lift this vehicle, they clink it right here through the axis, basically. One, two, three, four, of course, on all for wheels. So you will not find something like this on a civil vehicle. Then here on the side is the opening for the tank, which means that the driver sits on, on the fuel, which is probably not ideal, especially in accidents, but that's the way they designed it back then. Uh, you will not find a, a key for ignition on this vehicle. You actually sit inside and what you do is you just switch it on and then you hit with your leg here the ignition cap. This is how you start the vehicle. What's also interesting is those controls here, you know, in a military vehicle, you can turn off all the lights, which means that, you know, when you hit the brake, you will not see the red light in the back because this, you know, might give away your position if you're on a, you know, stealth recon mission or something like this, which is why there's different adjustments. What's also funny is the foot heater, so the foot area heater, which is switched on with the foot, I basically just open this pipe here, which means that some of the, you know, the heat of the engine goes right into this area if the driver has cold feet. What you can't miss, of course, is the mounting here of the 50 BMG Browning heavy machine gun. Uh, this one here is just a replica, so it's not a real one. Otherwise, we couldn't bring it to an airsoft milsim. Very soon, the owner is going to put an HPA engine inside so that he can actually use it during milsim. And already during driving, I tried it a little bit and man, it must be so much fun to play with something like this on a milsim. The M151 came in different variants, so they had them with the Browning 50 BMG machine gun, also with the light machine gun, and then with missile launchers and, you know, there were all kinds of crazy versions. Here in the back, obviously, we have extra fuel, we have a spare tire, um, antenna, which, funny enough, it has a warning on it, which says, body contact with any part of antenna or lead in wire while set is on may result in serious burns or death. Apparently the power of those radios was so strong that, you know, they had to put the warning there because otherwise when you touch it, apparently it did serious harm. So here they have the big antenna, another small antenna. Usually they had here a radio station, not on this vehicle. We have a shovel on the side, on the other side we have an AX. That's also, you know, every military vehicle needs stuff like this in case you get stuck somewhere, you just need to free yourself. You know, having tools is always a plus. Also in the back, what's actually interesting is the way you connect the trailer if you look at civil trailer connections it's always this ball head which you know the purpose is when the trailer flips it doesn't flip your car but this will not work with this one because once you have to pin through this and the trailer flips the car will flip together with it which is why the owner has to secure this with a bolt you're not allowed to use this on austrian streets okay then moving further to the front what else can we find batteries in here uh, 24 volts like in all military vehicles also we have this universal nato plug 
Um, so, you know, if you run out of battery, every tank, you know, that just stands around the corner can help you to start the engine again. What's funny as well is this little flap right here. Here you can switch between uh, the ventilation inside the car and here you can get fresh air. So when you heat the car, you get fresh air in. Then here in front, we have the cover for winter because, you know, when it was standing still in cold temperatures and they didn't want the engine to cool down too much, they could just open this and basically bring it down to block the grill and to block the cold from getting inside the engine. All right, guys, that was the M151, the Ford Mutt. Um, really cool vehicle, very unique to see something like this. Um, I always love to meet people who put a lot of money and passion and you know, blood and sweat into uh, refurbishing vehicles like this. It's not easy, you know, you buy them used and they're usually completely screwed up and making something like this takes a lot of time and a lot of energy.